Well, hi there, and welcome back to another episode of Let's Talk Real Estate Investing. I'm your host, Sharon Bornholt, and I'm so happy you're tuning in today. Today, I want to give you some tips on how to set your business up for success in the new year. We have a little less than eight weeks left in the year, which means there's still plenty of time to complete some of those unfinished goals that we all made at the first of the year. So let's take a look at how to effectively do that. So number one is to do a look back. So look back to the goals you set 12 months ago. How did you do? You know, often we tend to set so many goals that it's not humanly possible to get them accomplished. And often we just fail to implement uh, a path forward for accomplishing those goals. And if that's what is a, a problem for you, as it is for many people, you probably need a framework or a process like they have in the 12-week year. That's a book that I really love. So it's a good time to talk about that. If, you, if you're not using something to keep you on track, this is something you should definitely consider adding to your re routine. So the book, The 12-Week Year, was written by Brian Moran and Jay Papasan. So you can look that up on Amazon. Here's another thought. Is there anything that you need to let go of? Is there something that is no longer useful in your business? If so, just let it go and move on. You know, the beauty of entrepreneurship is that you can turn on a dime. You can just pivot and turn on a dime if you need to change course. But that's also the curse of entrepreneurship. So if your business has changed, it could be that you need to let go of some of the goals, some of the plans that you had that are no longer relevant. And I know firsthand that letting go can be hard. Sometimes it's hard for us to stop doing something or let go of something that's no longer serving us or our business, when in reality, that's exactly what we need to do. So number two, plan the rest of the year and put it on a calendar. This is really important. So planning is important. You need to know where you want to go in order to get there. So make your plan and just lay it out in broad terms to begin with and then start to niche down. But here's the really important part. It needs to be on a calendar. Action steps, uh, time blocks, where you focus on these uh, steps you need to take to reach your goals. It's, it's really important. Amy Porterfield, who has the Online Marketing Made Easy podcast, often says, if it's not on the calendar, it's not going to happen. And I do feel like she has a point there. I'm not saying that you need to have everything scheduled out to the minute. That's certainly not what you should do. But there's still time in this year to, um, to bring in some big changes to make some revenue for your business. So maybe find the one project you didn't complete. Maybe it's the one that would bring in some revenue and put all your attention on that one. Turn your phone off, um, whatever you need to do, shut down social media and then time block and focus on getting that one thing done. Even if you don't get everything done, if you can finish one big thing, you will feel much better about this process, about your year. So number three is your marketing. This is critical because, you, as you know, marketing is how you get leads in the door. And you already need to know that you need to be marketing throughout this uh, the next two months, the end of the year, the holiday season. Hopefully, you've got systems and processes set up so that that happens automatically. Everyone likes to enjoy the holidays, but this is a great time of the year to buy properties. A lot of people will step out of the market at this time. And if you if you are there as an investor, if you are there, then you can take advantage of some deals that other people will miss simply because they've gone to Florida for two months or whatever. Now, in addition to keeping your marketing going, another thing you need to do is look back at your marketing and evaluate your marketing strategies. Look at what's working, what's not working. You know, what is the effectiveness of your marketing? So look at your marketing strategies. Do you need to make changes? Do you need more ways to get leads in the door? And do you know your numbers? This is really important. You need to know how much money you spent to, gen to generate a lead. So how much money you spent on marketing will get has gotten you this many leads in your business. So what does it cost you to acquire a lead? 
Now, this means that you're going to have to make some decisions because things that worked maybe a year or two ago might not be working so well now. But you won't know that unless you know where your leads came from and how much it cost you to get a lead. So once you have this information, then you can make the necessary changes you need to make in your marketing and your marketing strategy. Number four is to start thinking about next year's goals. And when you're doing that, I don't think you should have more than three or four big goals. I'm talking big goals. There may be some little things you want to do, some peripheral goals, as I like to call them. However, one of these should be your stretch goal, and it should be your one thing, your big thing that you want to focus on. And this will look different for every person in business. But this is the thing. If you're trying to figure out what that thing is, it's the thing that will make the biggest impact on your business and your bottom line over the next 12 months. So maybe it's one of these things. Maybe you do need to add another investing strategy, another lead channel to your business that will consistently generate leads. Now, you know that I talk about probates and I've done a couple of shows on the silver tsunami, but this is something you know, really need to think about. This opportunity is going to last for almost 20 years as the baby boomers age out of the system. They sell properties or they go into probate. There will be about 2 million properties uh, hit the market every single year just from this demographic. This is big. If you are focusing on these people, the baby boomers, and they are people from born from 1946 to 1964, you will see that the oldest of these baby boomers turned 77 this year. So if you understand how this cycle is going to work, they'll have properties that need to be sold. Now, I'm not suggesting that you um, change course completely in your business, only that you understand this opportunity and that you add probates to your, to your business as one of your lead channels. Maybe your goal is to buy more houses. Let's say if you bought 25 houses this year, which is a lot, maybe you want to buy 50 next year. Or if you bought six, maybe you want to buy 12. Maybe you want to double what you bought last year. Then you need, that could be your stretch goal. And then you uh, go back and set up, how do I reach this goal? Do I increase my marketing? Do I increase my spend on marketing? Do I do more uh, social media posts to build awareness around me and what I do? There are so many things that you can do. You just need to pick a couple and focus on those. Now, I talked to someone the other day, their goal is to double their revenue. And one of the things that they mentioned was adding another profit center to their business. So they had uh, several goals. One was to grow their, their uh, deals by this much, to grow their over revenue by this much with their leads. So we talked about that. But the other thing that they wanted to do, since they were an experienced uh, investor, was they wanted to mentor other people and add coaching as a separate profit center to their business. You can sit down and put this all on paper and figure out uh, what's the best course for you. Whatever your decision is for you, you should not be just sitting still in your business. You should, If you're not growing, if you're not changing, if you're not evolving, then your business will die over time. But whatever this is, make it big for you. And if, if your big is to double your deals from five to 10, that's still doubling. That's big for you. If you have a much higher number, if you have, um, let's say you have a goal for passive income, whatever that is, make it big. It's just as easy to go after a big goal and fall, fall short as it is to go over a safe goal, uh, a smaller goal. Like I said, this should be on your calendar This or in a it should be in a document how you're going to get there and then put that on your calendar like uh, like the 12 week year framework allows you to do that. What do I do this quarter? What do I do each of the three months? And then what do I do each of the uh, four weeks or so in every month? So that's number four. Number five is analyze your mix of profit opportunities in your business. Now, we just touched on that a little bit. So buying and selling properties 
uh, no matter what your investing strategy is, is normally the biggest profit opportunity in a real estate investing business. Uh, there are some cases where I know that that's not the case, but by and large, that will be the main profit center in a real estate investing business. So if you are a, a rehabber or a buy and hold landlord and you aren't doing and you're getting deals that aren't a fit for your business, if you're not wholesaling these uh, deals, you're missing a big piece of the pie. I know that the first few years I was in business, I had uh, a buy box. This is what I want. This is what I don't want. And I lost uh, the the money from a lot of deals because I was new and I really didn't know wholesaling. So if you're not already wholesaling, add this to your business so that even if it's one or two deals a year that aren't a fit for you, they're fit for someone and you can make money on, on those deals. Now, how are you finding your leads? Well, if you're not working off market properties, you are missing a big stream of income. And I'm not talking about expired listings on the MLS. I'm talking about properties that have not been on the MLS they would be things like absentee owners, probates, pre-foreclosures, code violations, you know, properties that are going to the sheriff's sale or the commissioner's sale, whatever it's called in your area. Uh, though They would be another source of off-market properties. But there is so much less competition for these properties. Now, when in some cases like the investors you'll find down there buying properties uh, at the courthouse, they will be um, more sophisticated investors in general. So you're going to need to level up on your education. If you are a landlord and that is your, your buy and hold is your strategy and that's all you do and you need another profit center, maybe you would want to think about managing properties for other investors. Remember, this needs to be something that you need, want to do, but think outside the box. How can you add other profit centers to your existing business or how can you do more profitable deals? It might be that you uh, have better list. If you uh, you niche down on your list and you go after more profitable uh, properties in better areas, this will look like a little bit different for everyone. I talked to someone the other day that was asking me about creating a course and we talked about that. So maybe that's something you want to do. The point is this path will be different for everyone, but this is the time to look at possibilities. And I like to use this tool called Trello for this. Uh, I kind of like it because it's uh, it's easy to understand. It's a list format and it's color coded. And I do like the beauty and colors and figuring things out. So Trello.com, you can take a look at that. But Trello is great for doing brain dumps. I know I've talked about this before. So if you have a million ideas, rather than sticking them in a notebook, put them online and create a Trello. They're called boards. Um, I have one called Brain Dump. So you can create as many lists as you want under there. But it gives you a place to go and find uh, this information online when you need to work on it. So that's number five. So number six is to make personal development a priority in the new year. This is a big one. People are hesitant to invest in themselves, but you need to find a mentor or a coach because you will go further faster if you have someone to guide you. Remember, you'll go further faster if you have a coach or a edit this part out. My microphone stopped working. When it comes to personal development, think of this as an investment in you, which it is. I believe that you should never end a year the exact same person as you were when the year began. You should have evolved. You should be better. And in many cases, you will be different. Last but not least, ask yourself, who do I need to become to achieve what I want to achieve? 
In other words, who do I need to become to achieve these big goals that I've set out for myself? What habits and disciplines do I need to become this person and improve my own life? So that's an important question to ask yourself. That's a big decision to make around uh, growing your business because we often, well, I would say not often, we always have to grow out of our comfort zone. Okay, I hope this uh, this podcast will set you on a path to really thinking about becoming the CEO of your business, about being a planner, someone that sets intentions and doesn't just let business happen to them. It's said that success leaves clues. And I believe this, but I also believe that success comes from this person that you need to become to improve your life. Take out that last part. Okay. I, okay. I hope this will set you on a path to really thinking about being the CEO of your own business. It's said that success leaves clues. I think that success really comes down to planning and implementing those plans that you make. If you have questions, just let me know. Thanks for tuning in and I will see you same time, same place next week. Bye for now.